hello guys sherifa here so we're gonna continue from the last video and now we're gonna export properties so first i'm gonna export a speed and then after that we're gonna create a signal to emit whenever the dvd hits the corner we want it to emit that signal that it changes direction and we could use that to you know what i'm gonna do with this change the color obviously so we're gonna do that so let's get started first let's get back in this VS code and we're gonna manipulate this property so to change a variable you'll need to create a getter and a setter for it so let's go down here and create a void setter so let's say set speed double new speed then you want to get speed now so we need to get return a double get speed okay so next in our bouncing sprite cpp let's implement those methods void bouncy sprite uh set speed and then we need to pass a double new speed but here we want to change our speed to be that new speed and since we're changing the speed here it won't update here so we need to change the velocity in the moment we change the speed so in here let's say velocity equals velocity dot normalized this return a value between negative one and one depending on what direction it's going then we want to times that by its current speed and that should be good then get velocity just returns a double bouncy sprite get velocity or get speed sorry and we just want to return speed beautiful so now in the band methods we want to tell the class database about those functions so we need to say class database <clears throat> dash dash bind methods our bind method now you say d method and let's give it a name so let's do set speed then we need to pass the name of that um new variable so new speed next we need to give it the address of the function so bouncy sprite get oh not get set speed next we need to do the same thing again so class database d method get speed and then the address of get speed now all we have to do is add a property to do that we add property and we say property info and tell it the variant type and that's gonna be a float because gd script doesn't have a double by default but that's beyond the scope of this right now so float and then the name of that variable so speed as a string then we need to pass those two functions in so the first is a setter so set speed and then get speed perfect now all we need to do is compile and run again and we'll have a new speed function to adjust so let's go scans run there you go good save again and let's check out that there you go now we have a speed variable we could adjust it so 120 so 500 for example there you go and it changes instantly all right now on to signals let's put it back to 50. all right a signal is a lot easier to do all we need to do is say add signal and then method info so we're just giving the signal a name here so let's call it direction change changed ed and we could pass in something else if we want so let's say property info again property info me and let's say variant object <clears throat> and call it node let's close it off next we need a location to call that signal so we're gonna do it right whenever it checks whenever the position is greater or lesser than the bounce but we need to first make sure we don't call it too often so first we need to make sure it's less than zero for example for this one so we're gonna say if velocity dot x is greater than zero we want to emit signal emit signal and let's call a signal position change or direction change that's what we call it and let's pass ourself or this rather let's make sure direction change just copy this and make sure it's the same okay it's the same all right now we could compile and run again actually let's duplicate this first so we're gonna do it in each direction let's copy here paste here and make sure we check if it's less than here and then we want to do here again uh, y y less than zero all right and then just copy this and paste it back here again change it to y greater than zero now we could compile and run 
Okay, so now back in Godot. Let's go jump back over there. Now the signal is getting called each time it hits the wall. And if you check in the node and the properties, signals, and here you have the direction changed. So now we could assign this to anything. So let's do it on the node itself. Let's create a script. Let's call it DVD. And then we could attach the signal to it. All right. And what I want to do here is change the color. And you can use self-modulate to keep the transparency. And say new color. And let's just go back here and create that. So var new color equals color. And we're going to use rand, randf. Oops, randf three times. Randf and rand. And that should be it. So what you need to also do is you won't be able to see this in the editor right now. So what you have to do is make sure that script is a tool. So go up to the top here and set a tool. And then just reload the scene. And let's see what happens in a bit. Let's clear that. These are from before. There you go. And we could speed it up to see it change a lot faster. Let's go to 230. There you go. All right, and that should be it for this video. Oh, one more thing. Um, since it's going off screen, let's do, let's fix that. So let's put this back at 120. So we want to get the current texture that it has and get the half size of it. And then we could use that as an offset. So back into VS Code. Let's go up to right here. What we need to do is say vector two, but half size or let's call it offset we need to get the texture get texture what's going on here so you've oh i can't use that offset so let's just say size equal get get texture and this returns a pointer to the texture so we need to use dash arrow and then get size this gets the size from the texture i'm not I'm not sure what's going on here what is this click undefined Weird. Not sure what's going on there. Let's save and reload. That's being silly. Okay, so we're gonna pretend that doesn't have that's not happening here. I'm not sure what that is. So right here, we want to check if the position x is greater than right bounds minus size dot x divided by two. And we could copy this here and do it here again. But this one is going to be plus x divided by 2. Then for y, we're going to say plus size y divided by 2. Then minus y divided by 2. Save and run it again. Hope it doesn't cause a problem. Okay, that seems fine. So clear. And let's check it out. Let's reload the scene. It's working. Don't have to do that. There you go. So now it just goes to the edge. All right, guys. Thanks for watching and see you in another video. Like and subscribe guys.